first steps to programming your FTC robot. There are a lot of resources available at usfirst.org. First thing you're going to need is to download Android Studio. That's what you're going to do the programming of the robot in. It's a free download and works on Windows and Mac. Now, FTC has written most of the code needed for your robot. All you need to do is provide the specific instructions to run your robot. You download this code from GitHub and then you add to that code in Android Studio and then you download it onto your phone. Next, make sure your phone is set up for development. Here are the basic steps. There's a lot of YouTube videos and documentation on the internet about how to do this specifically. I'm not going to cover it in this video. All right, let's open up and set up Android Studio. When you first open it, it's going to ask you if you want to start a new one or open an existing Android uh, project. And we want to open an existing one because we already downloaded the FTC robot controller uh, and they call it the FTC App Master. So that's what we want to open. So find where you downloaded it to and open the FTC App Master folder. When Android Studio opens your project, you may need to perform some updates. When those updates are done, you're going to see that Android Studio attempts to build your project. And sometimes you're going to have errors down in the bottom window pane. And you need to click on those and make sure that the necessary components are installed. So go ahead and install those. All right, we're now ready to program the robot. We're going to start by uh, looking at the sample code in the FTC robot controller. That's where all the main code is. And then you put your own code in the team code. Let's find their sample code. So go into Java, click external samples, and I'm going to copy the hardware canine bot. We're going to use this as a template for our own robot. So go down into your team code and add this file by pasting. Rename the robot file name to something for that matches your own team. So I'm going to call it hardware test bot. So now we have our own robot code in the team code area. And we want to change it so it matches the robot that we built. At the top of the file, we have a bunch of comments. Those are gray. Those are not instructions for the robot. Then we go down into public class. This is where we're actually defining the information about our robot. And if you see, it's listing the servos and DC motors that are on our robot. For my robot, I have four DC motors, and I need to give them each individual names. I don't just call them motor one or motor two, I call them like left motor front or right motor front or left motor back so that in the code I won't get confused which motor I'm giving instructions to. Currently my robot has no servos so I'm going to just comment out those lines by putting two forward slashes in front of the code or if I have a large chunk of servo code like I'm right here, I can put a slash and then an asterisk at the beginning and then an asterisk and a slash at the end and it'll comment that out and none of that code will apply to my robot. The next two lines of code we need to leave alone. We have a hardware map which holds the information about what the motors are called on the phone and what they're called in the program. Now we need to come down into the init function and this is going to initialize that hardware map taking the names in this computer program and tying them to the names that we will have for the motors in the phone. Up above I declared four drive motors, a left motor front and a left motor back, etc. I need to make sure that I map each one of those to a name that will be given to the motors in the phone. So here I'm changing the names of the motors and putting the names I want to type into the phone. And because it's hard for me to type in the phone, I'm too lazy, I'm going to shorten these and use little acronyms. So instead of typing out 
right motor front, I'm just going to have it be RMF, and LMB would be left motor back. This line of code is actually very important. My left motors face the opposite direction from the right motors. But so if I want them to all go forward and I give them the instructions to go forward, my robot will actually turn around in a circle. So I need to reverse the direction of the left motors so that they match the right motors. And I want to make sure that all of my motors are turned off with a power of zero. I don't want them to start moving until I start my teleop mode or my autonomous mode. I'm currently not using any encoders, so I'm going to make sure that I set the mode for all of my motors to be run without any encoder. The last change I need to make is I need to get rid of this code about the servos. I don't have any servos, so I'm going to comment it out. Put two forward slashes in front of it, and then that code will not be run in the program. All right, that's all the changes I need for my basic robot that I'm practicing with. So we've created a representation of the robot in the program, but now we need to create an op mode. And an op mode can be an autonomous op mode or a teleop mode. And so I'm going to copy this canine bot teleop mode, uh, it's a tank mode, and put it in my team code. And this will allow me to drive my robot using controllers. When you name your teleop mode, make sure you give it a descriptive name so that if you have more than one, you won't be confused uh, which one you want to run. So I'm going to just call this testbot teleop. So we don't really need too many changes to this teleop file. We need to make sure that we change the name and description on the top of this file so that when we pull it up on our phone, it will have uh, the correct name. So I'm going to call it testbot teleop. And then I want to get rid of this disabled because I want my new teleop mode to be enabled. So I'm going to comment this out or delete it. Now we're really in the code for the op mode. We need to make sure that this op mode is ready to run my robot, which was a hardware test bot. So I need to change the name there. And I need to tell it that this variable robot is going to be created from a hardware test bot. So it needs to change in both places. The next four lines are servo code, referring to the arms and claws. And I don't have servos, so I'm just going to comment those out. Inside this function called run op mode is where all the work's done to take information from the controllers to drive your robots. So these two variables, double left and double right, double is a number. Specifically, it can have a decimal amount. And we're creating a left value and a right value. These are going to control the amount of power or speed that I'm giving to my motors. Now we initialize the hardware map. Telemetry code's interesting. It will allow you to print things to your phone. And then this line for wait start is very important. It's telling the code not to run until you've pressed start. Now we have a while loop. And everything in this while loop is going to run over and over and over while the start button's been clicked and the mode is active. Here the left and right variables are given information from the, the game paths. And then we set the power of our motors to the values inside of left and right. So I had those four motors, left motor front, right motor back, left motor back and right motor front. And so I need I have these four motors. I want to set their power to the values inside of left and right. The rest of this code deals with servos, so I want to comment out this code as well. I'll put a slash and then an asterisk to start where I wanted to be a comment. 
I can put a star and then an asterisk at the end of it. And everything in between them will become a comment and will not be run by the program. And you'll notice in Android Studio, it makes it gray. If it's gray, it's not going to run it. Finally, there's some telemetry information here. Uh, it's printing the uh, information that's in left and right to the phone. All right, assuming we've typed everything correctly, we can download this app onto our phone by pressing the green play or run button at the top of Android Studio. My phone's plugged in to my computer and it shows up here under connected devices. Press OK, Android Studio will compile and then download the app to your phone. Now you need a different app for your driver station phone. And you get that app from the Google Play uh, store. You don't need to write that app. It's made for you. So once you have both apps on your phones, then you can run your driver station uh, app and connect it to your robot controller. So I'm opening up my driver station app. My robot is plugged in and turned on. I press the three dots at the top. I click settings and I choose pair with my robot controller. And you should see your device pop up under the Wi-Fi devices. Press the return button. I'm all connected. Now we need to configure the robot uh, controller app so that it matches the program. So you go into configure the robot. We want to create a new configuration and you should see your devices pop up underneath. Now we need to edit these devices with the names of the motors that we put into the program. The wiring, the ports, the names all must be exactly correct. They all must match up or your robot will not work the way you expect it, if it works at all. So I'm checking which motors are plugged into which controllers and then I'm giving those controllers the correct names. I often put tape on the motors with their names. I then put the uh, names onto the wires. That way then it's so much easier to remember. I don't have to guess which motor is which or which wires plugged into what. When you've entered all your motors, save the configuration. Give it a name for your robot. Activate the configuration. Now you should be ready to test your robot. Okay, so the robot will restart. I need to initialize the gamepad controller, so I press Start A. I'm only using one. I press the arrow for my teleop, which was Testbot teleop. I click Init. I press Play, and now I can test out my robot and see how well it drives.